What's up guys? Welcome back to Lick Branch Farm. In today's video, we are going to be planting one of the most sought after varieties of tomatoes that we grow, heirlooms. And we're going to do that right after this. Welcome back guys. So the row of determinant tomatoes that were in here um, in the last couple videos you've seen, I got these out of here yesterday and cleaned everything up and I was really surprised at the amount of green tomatoes I got off. I got probably, I want to say roughly around 75 pounds of green tomatoes. Some of them were a little bit, or blushing. Um, but yeah, we got enough to put up in the freezer for when we make chow chow and things of that nature. But I came in here this morning, cleaned everything up, raked it out got everything back straight and i added an additional drip line in the middle of the row you can see because we're getting into the 100 degree weather where it's going to stay like this until september late september so we got three months of intense heat coming our way and this is not going to be the last plant of tomatoes that we do in this bed so we're going to plant these heirlooms and the variety that we're going to plant today is a german johnson it is a absolute fabulous tomato i mean when we carry these in markets we sell out every time we take them and we grow some big ones guys we grow some one one and a half almost two pound i have grown a two pound german johnson but these these are the plants and they're a little rough looking so y'all forgive me for that but these plants here i started from seed roughly six weeks ago but you can see they've got a little damage on them and that come from a tomato hornworm that I found out there. Well, I found several out there in the uh, trays outside. And you can see these guys did a number on them in no time. And there were two of them in this tray. And I found, I think I found both of them. But I'm going to go over these plants really good before I put them in the ground. Because I haven't seen any hornworms in here. But I have seen some out there. And we're going to take care of those guys before they become a problem. So really the best solution to get rid of these if you don't spray is just to pick them off. Now there is a wasp that flies around and it lays its eggs on these hornworms and it's supposed to be kind of uh, nature's way of creating balance in the insect world, but I'm not waiting on no wasps to do it for me. I'm gonna walk through here and check all these tomatoes and if I see it, uh, I'll go ahead and pick them off. Now, they can do a lot of damage in a short period of time. So if you see a leaf that looks like it has been munched on by a critter and I was looking in the ones that I got left to see, yeah, like right here, um, definitely, like this if you see any damage it looks like this start looking your pain he's going to he's going to be hard to see and we'll walk out here and look because i got some more tomatoes that i'm probably not going to get around to planting and there may be one in here but we'll go out here and look and see if we can find one real quick all right so i come out here at these other tomatoes that i got and i see you know this little bit of damage here and it didn't take very long i found this critter right here this right all right this is what he looks like and you can see he's got that big old hook looking thing on his back and I never heard of anybody getting stung by one. I definitely don't want to find out. I mean, he looks pretty intimidating, but if you see this critter right here, go ahead and pick him off. And, you know, there's a little satisfaction that comes from feeding them to the chickens. I mean, I won't do it on camera, but um, that's usually where mine go. And here is another one right here. See him right there? Just grab them out of the head. And they tough now. And just pull them straight up. And we're going to go through here and look. And I probably won't get to planting all of these anyway. But I definitely don't want them, you know, around. Um, and we've never really had a huge problem with them. I mean, but they're here. And we know that. So, all right, guys. So, we are going to go through here and lay off the road four of these tomato plants. Now, I told you that I added another line of drip. And you can see you got three lines. The emitters are six inches apart on this drip. And normally what we would do would be to plant right here in the middle of these two drip tanks, just so we got plenty of moisture. And then we would go to the 24 foot mark, which is here. But to be a little bit more aggressive, mm -hmm. and the fact that we do have as much irrigation as we have here, we're gonna go to the 18 inch mark. So we're gonna skip forward, one, two, three. And we're gonna plant here. Now what that's gonna do, normally we would be able to put 
30 let's see 30 up one side 30 up the other so yeah we would be able to plant 50 plants in a 50 foot row that is staggering it um one every foot and it's going to be a double row so 25 up one side 25 up the other side now that we're going to 18 inches it gives us the ability to increase that to 66 plants which has 33 plants on one side 33 on the other and you know that's nothing that's going to do nothing but give us a better yield that's 16 more plants than we would have and you know like last year when i grew them i didn't grow a tremendous amount of tomatoes but i grew really good looking tomatoes and we were able to ask a premium for it now we sell just regular old tomatoes for three dollars a pound at market and a lot of people say that's high but you see what go what kind of work goes into growing these things heirloom tomatoes on the other hand we sell for four dollars a pound that's we don't ask a higher price because of their availability and you know how much people are looking for them but we do have to ask a premium price for them because there is a lot more care in taking care of heirlooms heirlooms are indeterminates the varieties that we grow are indeterminates meaning they'll grow on forever if you let them but we are going to go to a different style trellis this year last year i trellised my heirloom tomatoes like i did these mountain magics with this eight foot t post this whole deal here and once it reached the top we folded it over and it started growing down and it just seemed like it never it never liked that trellising technique and we were not able to keep those plants in there long after i mean tomatoes would grow on them they grew on the tops they broke them out and it was just you know it, it went downhill really quick once they reached the top of the trellis now this year what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna trellis the plants with a tomahawk and i'll show you one here in a minute but what we do is we plant the plant hook the string to it, the tomahawk and then we're going to trellis up here so what i've got to do between now and time these guys need trellising which is not going to be too long is that i got to come up with a way to hook that tomahawk in and i'll walk out here and show you what i'm talking about i've got some ideas but i just haven't got anything set in stone but i've got to do something because we are going to be growing more heirlooms um down the road now i grew heirlooms in there last year but like i said i didn't use tomahawks but um i got a whole case of these dudes here so this is a tomahawk and what you do is basically you hook your string to the bottom of your plant and i got a bucket full of clips that i do this with and you're able to take this and unloop it and take off string as the plant grows to the top now um i've got cherry tomatoes on tomahawks over there now and i got to rethink my trellising on those guys but here i've got a lot more rigid um, space to work with and more than likely i'm going to have to figure out a cable system to couple to that to be able to hook this into now i thought seriously about dropping because that i specifically put these beds and these braces in here to be in the center of this row because i knew i was going to use it for trellising but what i've got to do is probably put a screw in there and run a solid or rigid pipe down the center of it to hook that cable to and hook these on so a little bit of brainstorm is going to be involved with this but that is going to be because i am going to lower and lean these guys and we will probably have this row in here for a very long time not only are we planting german johnson's which that's what this variety is and i've got plenty of them i got more than i'll ever plant this year i know we're also going to be planting in this tunnel over here a variety that we plant every year and you will hear me say this i feel like it is absolutely the best blt tomato out there if you go back and look at some of my older videos from last year when i grew this tomato you know we had people that were threatening me with bodily harm because i didn't grow these tomatoes all year long they're that good and that is a black cream that's what these guys are these are black cream tomato it's a russian heirloom and they almost uh, they resemble a cherokee purple to me in looks they're a dark dark purple almost a black purple on top and uh, green on the bottom got a calico of colors on the inside of it that resemble a cherokee purple but it has a real strong tomato flavor a real acidic tomato and it has a hint of smoke flavor in it it is absolutely wonderful on a blt sandwich all right anyway so we're gonna get down through here and i'm gonna take my hand and dandy stick y'all see me use this thing a hundred times and i'm basically just gonna make an impression of where i need to put a plant in the center of this row and this is gonna take me a little bit so y'all just hang out for a minute and then let me go ahead and get these laid off and then we'll get to put some plants on the ground <laughs>
All right, guys, so I figured I'd do one on camera to kind of give you an idea so y'all can see exactly what's going on. So what I'm doing is I'm getting about that far in, well, about this far in the ground, and getting a good size hole watered out. I'm taking roughly three quarters of that spoonful, giving these roots a little squeeze, and then going into the ground as deep as I can get it. And then I'm pulling dirt back up around it. And there's moisture in there already, you can see. That soil right there is damp, but below that, it looks really good. So, what we're going to do is kind of rake this out a little bit, fluff it up, and move on to the next one. All right, guys, so we got them all in. There's actually 67 in this row. I know I originally I told you 66, but there's 67 in that row. Math worked out right somewhere. But anyway, we got all these in. I'm going to leave the irrigation running for the rest of the evening. The sun's going down. You can see back over here on the ways. And starting to cool off a little bit. So I'm going to get out here and do some picking. Um, I think Bessie's going to try to go to the Ashboro market this Tuesday. And um, yeah, that's going to add another outlet for us to move some produce. During the week, um, tomatoes are starting to come off you know, really good. So that gives us an avenue to move those. And with this row here, we're probably looking at um starting to pick on this in maybe 45 days i'm gonna say um towards the end of july but when we get ready to start trellising these guys and it won't be long um i will get a video together and show you what i come up with for this trellis for these heirloom german johnson tomatoes so guys i'm gonna get off here and get busy picking and don't miss the next video because we're going to be working on some irrigation projects i've got to automate the irrigation in this tunnel and I got a new timer in the mail the other day that I'm going to debut, and it's actually going to take care of four zones at one, well, I say at one time, but it can manage four zones at any given time, any time of the day. And I'm going to give you an inside look at that, how we're going to set this tunnel up, plus this tunnel, and we got another tunnel on the way. So we will be adding an additional 50 foot, 21 foot by 50 foot tunnel to our farm here in the next three weeks or so so we got to finish this tunnel right now um get it going get it situated before we can actually start the next one so yeah don't miss next week's video we're gonna get into some irrigation parts of the farm but right now i'm gonna get off of here and get to picking so if you guys missed the video when we planted the last planting of tomatoes in this tunnel which would have been the market fresh plus i'm gonna put a link to it up here and if you found anything interesting anything useful or just want to know more about our farm click this subscribe button over here in the corner as always guys we appreciate you stopping by we thank you for watching we'll see you on the next one get that guy right there yeah i gotta get out here and get picking